Measuring delta E for chemical reactions at a constant volume. Now that we have the basics of heat and work calculations taken care of, we can do a lot more in terms of calculating delta E. We will do this using calorimetry, and it'll be different depending on if it's constant volume or constant pressure. In this video, we will be covering the basic concepts and then covering constant volume. In future videos, we will do constant pressure. For this video, we will define and use the concept of a bomb calorimeter. We'll combine what we know about energy, work, and heat to calculate delta E for a given reaction. Let's do a quick review of what we know so far about energy transfers and energy change. We know that heat and work are the two types of transfers. We know equations for both of them. Heat is equal to Q equals mc delta t, and work is equal to negative p delta v. We also know that these are the only two types of energy transfers, and therefore that delta E would be equal to Q plus W. Since we can calculate Q and we can calculate W, we can now calculate our change in energy. We can put all of these together in an example now. We have the change in an internal energy for the combustion of one mole of octane at a pressure of one atmosphere, and I tell you the value, 5,084.3 kilojoules. If the heat transferred is 574.1 kilojoules, so that's specific to the heat, how much work is done? So let's list out all of our possible equations that we would need for this problem. This, I'm not saying that we are going to use them all, but it's good to have all of these in our mind as things we can use. In this case, we know our heat transferred is 5,074. 5 and we also know our total internal energy change. So we're gonna wanna use delta E is equal to Q plus W to solve for work. So delta E is equal to Q plus W, we can fill in we can fill in our 5,084. Now, notice our signs. So take a second and look at the signs. In the problem, I didn't tell you that the, si that the signs were negative because I told you that it was a combustion of octane. And since it's combusting, we know that it's releasing heat. If you combust something, you can think of it as burning it. Since we're releasing heat, into the surroundings, our system is losing heat, our system is losing energy, and so our sign is negative. And those are things that you would need to figure out by reading the problem. I don't have to tell you that it's negative, you need to figure that out from the context clues in the problem. The same reason Q is negative. We're losing energy, and so our sign is negative. And then we have plus work, because we don't know how much work is done. At this point, we just solve for work. We do a quick rearrangement. And our work is negative 10.2 kilojoules. This time I left the units in kilojoules, because both of the values given were in kilojoules. And I wasn't using any constant that involved a joules value. So I could leave everything in kilojoules, get a kilojoules value at the end, and that's okay. If you wanted to convert everything to joules, you could. That wouldn't hurt anything. Now let's talk about bomb calorimetry, and then we're gonna do another example using these concepts. Let's first talk about the theory of what a bomb calorimeter is. In a bomb calorimeter, a material or a reaction is allowed to come to equilibrium. The calorimeter may or may not have water in it, this picture does, but sometimes it will just have a heat sink or something that will absorb a lot of heat. It is insulated from the environment, so there is no heat change with the environment, and it is sealed so that nothing escapes. In other words, no gas can escape. It is at a constant volume. The walls are generally very thick, so you don't have to worry about an, a gas pushing the walls out or anything of that sort. This creates that constant volume that we said we would be discussing here. 
Let's look at two of the equations we already know. We know that delta E for a reaction is equal to Q plus W, right? Delta E is equal to our heat plus our work. We also know that work is equal to negative P times delta V. Now, in this system, think about what delta V is equal to. Our delta V isn't equal to, well, our delta V is equal to zero because it's not changing. So if delta V is zero, then when we fill this in, our work is also zero. So let's say that one more time. If delta V is zero, if there is no change in volume, our work is also zero. But what does that mean when we then fill this into our delta E equals Q plus work? This means that our delta E is equal to Q. Now, careful that you remember and make big stars in your notes about this, that this is only true at a constant volume. When we do constant pressure, it'll be different. But at constant volume, if we measure Q, which we can do because we can measure the change in temperature, and if you look at our little picture, we have a thermometer stuck inside of it so that we can measure our temperature. We can measure our temperature change, and then we can use the exact same thing we did in previous videos to calculate our delta E. Now, experimentally, there is a little quirk to this, that our whole calorimeter is going to have a heat capacity. Maybe there's water in it, maybe there isn't. But even if there is, we don't want to use the heat capacity of the water. We want to use the heat capacity of the entire calorimeter. So if you were going to do this example, you would normally find the heat capacity of the entire calorimeter first. Not the specific heat capacity, the heat capacity. Once you know this, you can then use Q equals C delta T. So no mass, just C delta T because it's the heat capacity of the entire entity to find E of our reaction, as we'll do in the following example, okay? So we're going to do an example where we walk through and do this, but note that you would normally, in, in lab, have to find the heat capacity of the calorimeter. You're not going to know that from a book. So now an example. When 1.550 grams of liquid hexane combusts in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature rises from 25.87 to 38.13 degrees Celsius. Find the delta E for the reaction in kilojoules per mole of hexane. The heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter, de de determined in a separate experiment, is 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So this last part, this 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius, is what I meant by having to do this first in a separate reaction. In this case, it was done for you. So let's think about what we know. We know that our Q of our reaction is going to be the same value as our Q of our calorimeter. All the heat from the reaction is going to go into the calorimeter. So once again, we call this equal in magnitude, opposite in sign. So Q is equal to negative Q is the way of writing that. And then this is equal to negative C of the calorimeter times by delta T. So now we can fill in our values. I, we know the C of the calorimeter is 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So we can fill that in. And we can fill in our delta T, being careful to watch our signs. It goes from 25 up to 38. So final minus initial is 38.13 minus 25.87. We type all of this into our calculator and we get a negative 70.2 kilojoules. And this is our heat change of our reaction. We should always make sure that our signs make sense. So let's think about what we are determining and if our sign matches that. Our liquid hexane is combusting. It is releasing energy into the environment, which means it is losing energy. Just as if you release money into the environment, you lose money your bank account's going to drop. The same thing is true with this. The system loses energy, the energy drops, and that is a negative delta E. And we look here, 
And sure enough, Q is negative, and we know that Q is equal to E in this situation. I want to do one quick clarification, so just rearranging a little bit, and make sure that you recognize something. I know I've mentioned this a lot, but it gets asked all the time. So let's look at this, and let's look at how I filled that in. Why isn't this equation Q equals negative MC delta T? Why did I just use C? Remember, when doing calorimetry, we found the heat capacity of the entire calorimeter before this problem even started. The entire calorimeter. There is no mass in the denominator. It's 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Since there is no mass in the denominator, there is no mass needed. It is irrelevant since we know the heat capacity of the entire entity. Let's do a quick review. Bomb calorimeters are insulated and sealed. So two very important aspects. Insulated does not exchange heat with the environment. Sealed does not allow any gas to escape, and so no work can be done. Because the volume is constant, there is no delta V, which means that there is no work. And delta E is found just by calculating heat. We found this using the equations that we had done in previous videos. So we already knew going into this video that delta E is equal to Q plus W, and that work is equal to negative P delta V. So for constant volume calorimetry, and the constant volume part of this is incredibly important, make sure that you put anywhere in your notes that you write this, it is only for constant volume that delta E is equal to Q. This is going to change when we do constant pressure. So, but for constant volume, if you want to find delta E, all you have to do is find Q.